Hi everyone, welcome back. It's the Lux Bag Princess and today I'm here filming part two of my entire Louis Vuitton collection. Um, if you missed part one, just go check my channel. I originally thought there were going to be three parts to this. I don't even know how many parts there are going to be at this point. Um, <laughs> But if you missed part one, make sure you go on my channel and find part one. So very quick housekeeping. I'm the Lux Bag Princess, formerly the Louis Vuitton Princess. I've been collecting Louis Vuitton for about 10 years now. My collection is mostly composed of vintage Y2K styles. That's what I go for. That's what I really enjoy. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of my Louis Vuitton collection, make sure you stop by my Instagram, the Lux Bag Princess. If you're interested in shopping, sourcing, or consigning with me, make sure you stop by my Instagram, shop Lux Bag Princess. Okay, so we're going to jump right back in and we're going to start, I guess, with one of my most inquired about bags. And that is the Louis Vuitton Mini Speedy in special order Zamie a bean. Um, this bag I've had for a couple years now and I absolutely love and adore this bag. People are always trying to buy this one off of me. People are always asking questions about this bag. This is without a doubt one of my most asked about bags. If I ever post it online, it literally takes like five minutes before I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven DMs of people asking me essentially if they can buy it off of me um this is my like one seller i gatekeep i have purchased quite a few bags from the seller and it's like gatekeep as in i just like try to keep her name on the low because she is a public seller you can find her on most major platforms but i don't put this seller out a lot and i would love to because they're a great seller but i like to keep the good finds for myself they have a large selection of very rare very limited edition items for very fair prices um and so this was one of those pieces i purchased from them you don't see these very often at all i think this one is only like the maybe fourth one i've ever seen for sale online so you don't see them very often most people don't even know they exist um but i absolutely love this one next we have my louis vuitton clay in the cherry blossom mirakami and this is like from over the past year i decided I wanted to get a bunch of the Mirakami Cherry Blossom pieces. Um, again, I love all things Y2K, Mirakami, 2003 through 5, Louis Vuitton. So this one's an absolute must have. Next, I have my Louis Vuitton Le Noir, and this is one of my favorite Y2K bags. If anybody was to ever ask me, like, what my top three Y2K bags would be, it would absolutely be the Multicolor Speedy, of course, but the other one that would have to be on the list would be the, the Le Noir. I love the Le Noir. It is, in my opinion, one of the most beautifully made bags by the brand. I mean, there's hardware everywhere, big buckles. The stitching is super elaborate and beautiful. Um, it has pleated vachetta. I mean, this bag is stunning. I was very, very lucky to find this bag for only $500 a few years ago. The price point for these is definitely more like $1,200, $1,300. So $500 was a very, very good price. And I bring that up all the time when people always ask me, like, how do I have so many of these very premium, very expensive limited edition bags? And the answer is I just find them for very cheap. It's really that simple. Um, next we have my Louis Vuitton Cherry Clay. And um, I started collecting the Cherry Collection a few years back as well. And I really love this collection. Again, I'm a big Mirakami fan. I love that the pieces are very colorful and a little whimsical. I personally enjoy that a lot. And then we have my Louis Vuitton Multicolor Noir Pouchet Accessories. Um, I went through quite a few of these until I landed on the right one, but this one is going to be my final one, more than likely. Um, I purchased my very first Pouchet Accessories 
quite a few years ago from a random lady on Facebook Marketplace for $180. Um, and so this one, um, I purchased, so I sold that one and I brought this one from one of my connections in Japan and I upgraded because the first one had some wear. Um, it wasn't like terribly beat up or anything, but it had some wear that I didn't really like and um, I kind of used it a lot. I abused it, I'm not gonna lie, because it was one of my first multicolor noir handbags. So I had definitely damaged the silk screen um, a little bit and I wanted one that had a little less silk screen wear so that was another reason why I switched and I also started buying more multicolor noir pieces with the pink and purple colorway so that was also something else that I wanted. My original one didn't have um, the pink and purple colorway. So next up I have my Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 in series. Um, I absolutely love the Speedy 25 and I absolutely love the Cherry Collection. Again, this one I've had for about five years, um, very sentimental to me. It was an item that I purchased when I got my first like real paycheck from my first real job. Um, and I was able to buy this back before they skyrocketed. So back when they were still um, pretty reasonably priced and I love this bag and on it, I have my Monogramouflage Bandeau very fortunate to find one that even still has the original tag attached um but I have the monogram of fudge speedy and so I feel like if you have the monogram of fudge speedy you have to have the monogram of fudge bandeau and the bandeau is like very very hard to find like you can find the speedies easier than you can find the bandeau so next up, I have my Cherry Blossom Papillon 26. This was another one in my collection that I swapped. I purchased my original Papillon 26 some years ago and it was in good condition, but it was another one that I wasn't a huge fan of the layout. Um, it didn't have very many clustered flowers and it didn't have a lot of flowers on the front. And I really wanted the piece to have a lot of flowers specifically on the front. Um, so I sold mine and swapped it out to buy this one that has a lot more flowers and I'm really happy I did because I really like, um, you know, my limited editions to be heavily printed. So next up we have my Louis Vuitton um, Sarah Wallet NM in Multicolor Noir. If you know, you know, when I brought this one back in what probably would have been like 2017 or something, these were extremely popular. Um, I purchased this one off of Facebook Marketplace for quite cheap. Um, it has the very pretty fuchsia um, grenade interior. Really, really love this wallet. I'm a big fan of envelope style wallets, so this was an absolute must have for me. Next, we have my cherry round coin purse. I purchased this one not too long ago this year. Um, I Again, I collect cherry, so this was kind of a piece I had to have. Um, it's always one that I really liked, but they're usually really expensive. And it was another one of those pieces that I was able to find for a very good price. And so when the opportunity presented itself, I took it to go ahead and get one. Next up, We'll look at this one. This is my Louis Vuitton Cherry Blossom International Wallet. I love this wallet. Um, personally, I wish the layout was a little bit better. Um, I wish that this one had more um, flor floral kind of like clusters with the Cherry Blossom. But this is one of those things, as I mentioned, of when you get into these limited editions like this where each one is kind of unique, you kind of just have to take what you can get. I would prefer if there was a few more flowers um, centristic on this one, but these wallets are so hard to find. You hardly ever see, um, you know, any SLGs in this print. So it's kind of one of those things where if you find one and the price is decent, you should just buy it. And again, if you find a print layout that you like better in the future, swap it. But you kind of just have to jump on it in the moment if you're able to find one. 
Next up is my Cherry Bucket Pouchette. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the Cherry Pouchette accessories, but the Cherry Collection does have a bucket pouchette because it does have a bucket. And a lot of people are not familiar with the bucket pouchette. A lot of people don't know that the bucket pouchette exists, but it is a pouchette that comes with the petite buckets. And size-wise, it's sort of in between a mini pouchette and a pouchette accessories. It's still smaller than the pouchette accessories, but it is bigger than a mini pouchette. So since we're talking about bucket pouchettes, I'll show you my other one. This is my Louis Vuitton Multicolor Blanc Fringe Bucket Pouchette. This has been my year of multicolor fringe. I have finished off my multicolor um, Blanc Fringe collection. I now have the bucket pouchette. I have the bucket and I also have the... Um, speedy 30 in multicolor fringe so i finished that collection and i'm very happy about it um a lot of people have asked me if i would be interested in getting this collection in noir as well and the answer is yes i would love to have the fringe collection in noir but it very much is just based on price um this kind of like sub collection is very 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 expensive and premium and sought after and so the only reason i even have like all of these pieces from that collection is because I was able to get them for very very good prices so if I was able to find a noir um, for really really good prices I absolutely would jump on the opportunity to have the noirs but um, you know it's very much so giving the price is right. Um, next up, I have my clay. This is my Zalmier Abine clay. And this one is special because it's actually the Centenaire clay. So it has leather on the back, canvas on the front. You can see it's a bit more square and it is red Alcantara lined. So this is from the Centenaire collection. And as you guys know, I'm a very big fan of Louis Vuitton Centenaire. Um, that's another one of those sub collections I really like that was released um, in, I think, 1990, yeah, 1996 for the 100th anniversary of Louis Vuitton. So very big fan of that one. Next up, we have my Louis Vuitton Salon. Um, I absolutely love and adore this Salon. Um, it took me a really long time to hunt this down. It, in my opinion, is the perfect colorway. Um, it features the blue and green colorway, as well as the purple and pink colorway. And I think this is the perfect colorway for the Salon personally, and it has very light vachetta. So this is one, it took me a really long time to track down. Um, and I kind of go through phases with this bag. Like sometimes this just is my spring bag. I carry it like every day in the spring. And there are other times when I just like don't really pick it up as much. But I talked about this some in my first video. I rotate my bags a lot based on season. So this is one that I have not really used in a while um, because it's not a summer bag for me. It's a spring bag. Um, but you know, she will return next spring. <laughs> Next up, I have my Louis Vuitton Sarah Wallet in Blanc, and this is another one of those that falls into the category where I really wasn't pressed um, about having this one, but I had the opportunity to buy it for very, very cheap. I brought this one from my um, connections in Japan for $100, and it's in very, very good condition. So this is just kind of one of those ones that you know, I love it and everything, but it's not like one I saved for or anything like that. It's a pretty common piece. Um, I just scooped it up because I had the opportunity to buy it for cheap. And again, I just kind of operate on the policy of if you are able to buy affordable and authentic Louis Vuitton, especially if it falls into the category of like $100, <laughs> you just kind of have to get it. Um, so this is my Louis Vuitton Cherry. Um, I think this is an international wallet, um, but this is my wallet that goes with the Cherry Collection. And if I'm not mistaken, I feel like this, this was like my second 
our first cherry piece I don't really remember um but this is definitely an early cherry piece for my collection and this one I purchased just from some random lady on the internet for like I think $115 so again another one that kind of just fell into that category of it was authentic Louis Vuitton and it was cheap so I bought it and gave it a try Next up, we have my Louis Vuitton Pouchette Accessories in Multicolor Blanc, and this was my second multicolor purchase. This was my first multicolor handbag purchase, and I purchased this back in the good old days on eBay, and I paid, I think, like $200 for this on eBay back then. Um, very, very, very good condition. I have done a good job at preserving it just because this one is kind of sentimental to me and the fact that it is one of my first um, multicolor Louis Vuitton handbags. Absolutely love this piece. It's so beautiful, so pretty. Um, I do wish that this one had the pink and purple colorway on the back side, but again, when I first got into Louis Vuitton, I was really into this green and blue colorway, and I still am. I still think it's pretty. I still like it. Um, and this is one that I won't be swapping just because it's like kind of sentimental at this point in my life. So next up we have the mini speedies and I guess I'll pull out both of them for you guys. But these are my multicolor mini speedies. Um, these I brought at the beginning of the multicolor uh, mini speedy craze. So before they got too expensive and it got too chaotic. So this one I purchased for $250. This was my first mini speedy I ever bought. Um, again, I found this one for $250. Um, yeah, so if you know, you know, I, I, I could not leave it for that price point. And this one I brought during the thralls of the multicolor mini speedy craze. And I found this one for $700. So I had to pay a little bit more for it. Um, but I don't care. It's in very good condition. And again, if you know, you know, as far as the multicolor mini speedies are concerned, um, $700 is a very, very good price. So next we have my Louis Vuitton cherry um, bucket. Oh yeah, my desk bag. Bucket P or petite or PM, PM bucket. So I absolutely love these. These are the dust bags that came with the Louis Vuitton cherry collection. I think they're so pretty. Most people don't know about them. Um, most people, when they sell the cherry bags, they keep the dust bags for themselves. Um, so a lot of people kind of like never see it. Um, but again, so here is the bucket PM. And as I stated, this is the bucket pouchette. So the bucket pouchette actually connects on the D ring to the bucket pm but this is my bucket pm um this one i was hoping to get in better condition but again by the time i started looking for it these had really gone up in price like crazily so i kind of just had to take what i could get um the condition on it isn't bad but it's not as good as a lot of my other bags but i paid a fair price for it so i kind of just live with it i suppose but it's still really cute this is my Trocadero 23 crossbody and this um, very quickly became one of my favorite bags of the year. Uh, she is coming out of hibernation because this is a bag that I use a lot in the fall and winter. It is one of my favorite fall and winter crossbodies so she will be coming out of hibernation and I absolutely love the Trocadero 23. I did a whole little think piece on the Trocadero 23 when I first got this bag from one of my connections in Japan because I have never been a big fan of the Trocadero. I actually hate the Trocadero. I actually brought the Trocadero many years ago and I freaking hated it. Um, and that's because I didn't realize how many sizes there were to the Trocadero. I brought the big Trocadero um, and again I absolutely hated it because it's basically the size of a campaign. Like it's like this big and so you're just like walking around with a toiletry bag on your hip and it was so ridiculous. I hated it. Um, but the Trocadero 23 in my opinion is the correct size um it is cross body size and it actually just looks like so cute i love this bag and i'm so glad i took the plunge and bought this one from my connection in japan it's my like one of my favorite cross bodies and again like i said this is one that i basically just use like all winter i love this bag 
Next we have the Alma BB. We all know and love the Alma BB in Dominate Bean. And this one is famously the last um, brand new in-store purchase I made at Louis Vuitton um, handbag wise back in 2018. And I'm still very glad I did because I absolutely love the Alma BB. This is my Louis Vuitton Tahitian Pouchette. Um, I purchased this one, I think, for like $300. And this is another one of those bags I always bring up when people are like, how do you get stuff for really cheap? And the reality is sometimes you get stuff for very cheap because you take the risk. Um, this bag I purchased for $300 and I bought it off of a random man in a Wegmans parking lot. That is a true story. Um, <laughs> brought it off of a random man in a Wegmans parking lot and thankfully it is 100% authentic and it's in very very good shape but this is one that I had been trying to track down for a long time the Louis Vuitton Tahitian collection was one of those collections where it came and it sold out really 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 fast I wasn't able to get one and I was really sad and I really wanted this pochette ever since so I was really happy that I was able to find one um even if it was unconventional <laughs> Next we have my Louis Vuitton Cherry Blossom Umbrella and I guess I'll open it up for you guys. So this is my Cherry Blossom Umbrella. Um, I got this one this year and I have a whole video on my YouTube if you're interested in seeing more of this item. It's so freaking cute. I love and adore this one. Um, and this was another one I was very, very lucky. Um, I brought this one, like I said, this year, and this was another one that was only a hundred dollars. So, you know, these umbrellas are typically more like a thousand dollars. Um, this one was a really good find, really good price point. But again, going back to this thing of finding rare, authentic Louis Vuitton items for a hundred dollars, I really just can't help myself. And next we will look at the keep alls. So I have three keep all 45s. First up, we have my keep all 45 and multicolor blanc that I purchased earlier this year. And all of my keep alls I got for very good prices. Next up, we have my keep all centenaire, which is very rare. Uh, you basically never see these. And I also purchased this one this year for a very, very good price, especially for such a rare bag. And lastly, we have the one that everybody dreams of, and that is my Keep All 45 and Multicolor Noir. And I've had this one for a few years now, um, actually quite a few years. And I was very lucky. I brought this one off of the internet from basically a teenager for a thousand bucks. And <laughs> it's one of my more controversial um, purchases because people are like, wow, you kind of just like, you know, committed robbery on that a thousand dollars even for a multi-color more people. But you know, I don't feel bad at the end of the day. The reality is I'm able to acquire most of the things that I do because I get them for very, very good prices. And as I say all the time, I feel like in this day and age of the internet, we all have the full ability to, you know, educate ourselves on our items. And if you are tech savvy and internet savvy enough, to you know make an account and list something for sale online then you absolutely are tech savvy enough to you know look up what it is that you're selling um and i especially don't feel bad when i score these like super limited edition items like that for really cheap because here's the thing um a lot of these people who I buy this stuff off of and I've bought this stuff off over the years, um, I don't know, not to sound insensitive, but they're usually people who are very spoiled. And I don't say spoiled as an insult because the reality is I aspire to be spoiled. We should all be spoiled. And I bring up these people being spoiled because what that essentially means is they're people who somebody paid, you know, $3,000 
for that Keep All 45. The Keep All 45s have never been cheap, not even at retail. And so it's like somebody paid $3,000 for that bag. And if you're going to sell it to me for $1,000, I'm absolutely going to take you up on that. And I don't feel bad about it because at the end of the day, you're a teenager who wanted $1,000. I gave you $1,000, um, you know, and I got something that I wanted. And ah, I was hoping it wouldn't fall. At the end of the day, I feel like everybody's a winner in that scenario. And you know, um, it's a reason why I have, um, you know, prices and valuations for all my bags, because I never want it to be the case that I give a bag to my kid or something that's very valuable and then they're selling it on the internet for a thousand bucks. I would not want that to be me. So... <laughs> Don't let your kids in your closet. I guess that's the takeaway. But I will not be the bad guy for capitalizing on spoiled kids, selling valuable things for cheap. I just won't be the bad guy for that. So next up, we have my Centenaire Alma. This one's quite beat up. This is one of the most beat up bags I have in my collection probably. But this is one where I really didn't care that it was beat up because the Centenaire Alma is such a rare bag that I honestly could care less that it's beat up. And I've been in the process of getting um, estimates on what would be needed to fully restore her. But I absolutely love the Centenaire Alma. I've had so many people try to buy it off me. I really really don't care that it's a little bit beat up. This is my Soho backpack in Centenaire. Um, another very, very rare um, piece. And I purchased this one earlier this year on an eBay auction for $340. And there should be a video on my YouTube um, specifically about that one. So I guess this is an honorable mention just because it's in the bucket. This is not a Louis Vuitton. This is my Gucci Tom Ford hobo. Um, I absolutely love this bag. But again, just an honorable mention because it's not a Louis Vuitton. And I probably will at some point film a little video of my entire Gucci collection because I do actually have a decent amount of Gucci bags now. Um, but again, this is Louis Vuitton. Next up, we have another one of my favorite purchases. I can't remember if I got this this year or last year. I honestly don't remember. But this is my Louis Vuitton BB St. Cloud. Absolutely love the BB St. Cloud. When I first posted this one, people went crazy over it. Most people had never seen the BB St. Cloud. They were just like completely in awe at this bag for being so cute and so adorable and so small and so rare. Um, the BB St. Clouds are very rare. They're from the 80s. You don't see a lot of them. Um, and I am a huge fan of the BB St. Cloud. I actually don't really like the St. Cloud a lot. Um, I actually don't like the St. Cloud, <laughs> but I do have two of them and both that I have are just like very, very rare variations of the St. Cloud, which is why I like them. I have the BB that I just showed you guys, and I also have an exotic St. Cloud. Um, so I love the St. Cloud on the condition that like it's a rare variation. Next up is my beloved Aliza, and this one almost got sold this year. I was very, very close to selling this one this year, and then I just could not bring myself to do it. Um, this one I purchased on Facebook Marketplace, and I paid a hundred dollars for this bag and as you can see it's in very 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 good condition um there isn't like really any major wear or tear or anything like that very very beautiful condition especially for the Aliza usually when you see these online they are quite beat up um especially when you see them for sale so very happy with this bag and honestly I'm really really glad that I kept it because I feel like I would have regretted selling it and that's exactly why I didn't sell it because when I actually sat back and thought about it I was like I am going to regret it so much if I sell this back and I'm glad I didn't. What's in here? Oh yeah another gem of mine that I also considered selling this year and I'm really glad I did it because I would have regretted it is my Louis Vuitton iCat um, Pouch Accessories NM and just looking at this on camera, I'm just sitting here thinking to myself like, oh my god, I'm so glad I came to my senses and I did not sell this bag because it is so freaking beautiful. I mean, do you see that color in the sunlight? It, 
it's it's breathtaking i freaking love this bag and i'm so glad i came to my senses and i did not sell it i don't have very many um very knee pieces but this is a very knee piece that i love and i purchased this one too many years ago now to remember but i know i paid 270 dollars for it which is a very great price and it came with both straps the nm strap and it also came with the crossbody strap this is one of my favorite bags it took me a long time to get it's kind of smushed down in the bottom whoops but that's fine because it's a fabric bag so it can be completely reshaped um but this is my Louis Vuitton Jasmine monogramouflage. Um, this is the first monogramouflage bag I got before I thought I would be able to get my hands on the Speedy 35. And I have my super cute little, um, my super cute little Mirakami flower on it that was gifted to me by a I believe it's Smiling Cats Couture, who's also on YouTube, and she's one of my favorite consignment clients. I love her so much, but make sure to go check out her YouTube channel. She always gives me cute little gifts, and it also has the tag, and so yeah, this is one of my first My Grandma Flash bags. Again, it's kind of folded up at the bottom of the bucket, um, but this is also one that will be coming out of retirement because this is another one of my bags that I use a lot in the fall. I pull out my denim items in the fall um so yeah this is one that will be coming out of retirement for the fall okay next up we have my louis vuitton beverly gm and this one is in multicolor noir um and in part one i showed my multicolor blanc beverly gm this one is in much better condition than my blanc and i've been debating for a long time um selling my blanc one and keeping this noir one this one's in much better condition i occasionally think about selling this one but this is just another one that I know if I sell it, I would just be like so freaking mad at myself. And oh my gosh, it was like again. The colorway on this one is perfect. I mean, look at it. Green, blue, pink, purple, blue, blue. Pink, like the colorway is perfect. I would be so mad at myself if I sold this bag. And that's why I don't sell it. I do use this one. This one is definitely a, I would say spring kind of in that spring summer transition is when i pulled this one out a lot so really glad i have made the decision to keep it and at the very bottom of the tote pretty good and smushed but that's okay this one's old and honestly being smushed is like not even close to the worst thing that's happened to this bag is my blood totally mm that i have had for many years now i've had this one for like a decade this is one of my first like nicer louis vuitton bags that i purchased and i purchased this one i literally saw a lady carrying a totally mm she was carrying the monogram at a conference and i completely fell in love with it and thought it was so cute and so this is one of my earliest purchases in my collecting venture I love the Totally MM. Again, I have no problem just putting it at the bottom of the pile here because the Totally MM um, Dalmia Bean is my main travel bag. Um, if I'm ever taking a flight, that is the first bag that I grab. Um, so I have no reservations about just like putting it here in the bottom. That bag goes under my seat on the airplane. So it, it's there's really no shame in my game with regards to that one and how it is used. But anyways, I think that is it for this installment, part two. So part two, I think was like 50 minutes, or I'm sorry, part one, I think was like 50 minutes. So part two looks like it's gonna be like 35 minutes or so. Um, I'm trying to make sure these aren't all, uh oh, I knew that was gonna fall. I'm trying to make sure that these aren't all, um, I forgot my phone stand. I don't have my phone stand on me. I think I left it at work. Um, so I'm like using a makeshift stand. But anyways, so I think that's going to be all for part two. Um, so I think there's still going to be a part three and part four. So 
with how many bags I got thrown in this one, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be four parts. So I will probably film another part either today or tomorrow. And for part three, we will be going through all the bags that remain in the display cases over here and we'll be going through some of the bags that are on top so part three will kind of be like mini it'll be kind of small um there's still quite a few bags but not a ton so that one will probably be pretty fast and then we'll do part four but anyways as always thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed part two of i believe it's gonna be four of my entire louis vuitton collection and i hope to see you guys over at part three